One of the most important parts of an F1 car is the wheel itself, and I'm going to walk you through everything you need to know. The first rotary switch on the wheel is for the differential. There are three of these. Top left is for entry, then middle left is for mid corner, and top right is for the high speed. These control the car's differential. A differential is a system that controls the engine's torque to the wheels. It takes the power from the engine and splits it, allowing the wheels to spin at different rates. The driver can change these to benefit them in different types of corners. DRS. This button is pretty self-explanatory. It's for the driver to enable the DRS or drag reduction system on the rear wing. It's manually operated and they'll get a beep in their ear when they pass the line so they know to press the button. Then there's a few driver default buttons, the plus 10 and the plus 1. They're used in conjunction with the rotary dials that we'll get onto a little bit later. Say a driver is asked to put the engine in HPP7 position 30, they can use the plus 10 to quickly get to the required setting without clicking it one at a time. But they have the option to click it one at a time if they need to. Remember the drivers are doing all this while trying to stay on the road. The end button is for neutral. The neutral button isn't used as much anymore. It will put the gearbox into neutral and once upon a time the drivers would have used this during pit stops. But the pit stops are so fast these days that it's not really needed. We then have a few rotary switches that control the car's brake balance and brake migration. Brake balance controls how much of the braking is being done by the rear or the front of the car. Different drivers will like different amounts and this can be changed to reduce the chance of any front tyre or rear tyre locking. Brake mitigation, on the other hand, is a more advanced system that dynamically changes the brake balance as more brake force is applied. There are also two buttons at the bottom of the wheel to quickly move the brake balance forward or rearward, and one last rotary dial to fine-tune the balance even further if needed. There's a lot of switches for braking. OT is the overtake button. This will give drivers the maximum power and boost available to either attack or defend. It's pretty limited, but you will often hear an engineer saying over the radio, overtake is available. The red button with an X on it is a cancel button, which is used when the driver is navigating the menus displayed on the wheel screen. As you can imagine, there are a lot of menus on a system this complicated, so they may sometimes need to backtrack. Then we have three very important rotary dials that I mentioned earlier, and they're at the bottom of the wheel, and they control various car and engine settings. The strat rotary on the left and the HPP rotary on the right are used to control the engine side of things. Strat modes are used for controlling engine power during the race. The HPP rotary on the other hand has a number of engine related settings including engine recovery, fuel mixture and ignition timing. It's all very complicated. The dial in the middle is a menu rotary which can change any number of chassis related or menu items including the display itself. If it's not engine related, it's probably on this middle dial. You won't win any awards for guessing what the torque button does. It's for the driver to use the radio to communicate with the pit wall. The button above that though, titled Mark, doesn't actually do anything with the car itself. It's a button the driver can press that will simply create a marker in the data for the garage to analyze. Say the driver feels something odd during a practice session or the race, they can press the button so that point will be marked and then the garage can later on go back in, see where the mark is and analyze the data. The next two buttons are pit related. The PL is the pit limiter button. This will restrict the car to either 80 kph or 60, depending on the restrictions at certain tracks. The driver still has to get the car down to the required speed though, before pressing it. PC on the other hand is pit confirm. This is a button that signals to the garage that the driver is intending to pit or confirming the driver is accepting a request to pit. It doesn't do anything on the car other than just signal to the garage. Of course, you also have the display in the center of the wheel, which shows the driver all information they could possibly want from tire temps, lap times, delta times, you name it. Above that is the RPM lights. They light up as the driver accelerates and gives the driver an indication of when to shift. The lights to the side of the screen will light up with a corresponding flag that's out on track. For instance, if there's a blue flag, yellow flag or red flag, these lights will light up in the corresponding color so the driver has an immediate warning on their wheel alongside the flags and screens out on track. On the rear of the wheel, you would have the shifters as you would expect. Right side shifts up a gear and left side shifts down a gear when you have the wheel facing you. The bottom panel is for the clutch. Some teams will have other panels or buttons back here as well, depending on how they run their wheels. Some drivers use a paddle to activate DRS, for example. Every team has different wheels with different placements of buttons, but the core functionality will be the same. Even drivers within the same teams will have different positions for different things. 
It's just personal preference based on what they are used to. Lewis Hamilton, for instance, has certain paddles and buttons in different positions to George Russell, and that's pretty normal across the grid. And there we have it. I hope you find this video useful. And if you did, why not check out the rest of my F1 Beginner's Guide? Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.